So the question is that even though you have submitted yourself to God, are you allowing the process of forging to take place? Yes, it will be painful. I am not assuring you that you will not cry. I'm not assuring you that there won't be days when tears will fill up your eyes and it would be like, please, can this just stop? But it will not stop, not until you are the shape God wants you to be. Welcome to Loving the Scripture. So this is where we study our Bible and learn from it every day. We share exciting, inspiring, correctional, everything, the whole spectrum of God's word. And I'm happy to have you here with us. My name is Joshua Dunlade and let's get right on to the study. What do men and swords have in common? Well, not much. But as we sit on the sidelines today, in the cave, we see David's men and we hear them. We hear them clanking away, training themselves in the art of the sword. And this sound reminds us of something very familiar. It's like the sound of a bladesmith or a swordsmith chipping away at the sword, striking it one strike at a time, every strike having a meaning, every strike having a purpose, bringing the sword closer and closer to its final shape, hitting it again and again, not just hitting as in striking, but also raising its temperature so that it can be moldable, so that it can be malleable. The swordsmith hits the sword again and again and again and again. I begin to wonder, is the sword offensive or did the sword offend the swordsmith? Why must it hit it and hit it? Why must it burn the sword and then hit it again and again and again and again until the sword takes the shape? in the heart of the swordsmith. The sound of their swords remind me of the same process that the swordsmith takes to forge a sword. Before we go any further, before we listen any more to the symphony of the swords and to the beauty of the music it makes, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we say thank you. We are grateful for this opportunity this field trip that you have given us to come to Adulam this morning again. We are thankful. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you administer your word to us and that you teach us yourself in Jesus' name. That as we share and admonish ourselves from what we can learn from the lives of David and his men, that you would help us to withstand training and sound doctrine and that you would help us to become better versions of ourselves. Lord, we say thank you for having our prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. It's, it's almost dawn. It's not even daybreak yet. And yet, his men are already up. David's men are already giving themselves to training. As I said, one strike at a time. Each man builds up himself in the heart of the sword. In the art of war because they know that the enemies they fight against are after their lives to kill them. Each man at war cannot be a liability. He has to be an asset. And to be an asset, training must occur. Not just training to wield the sword alone, but training to do everything and anything you need to do at war. And this was the making of David's mighty men, as the book of First and second Samuel calls them. This training for so many of them started at Adulam. So we go back to the text again, First Samuel chapter 22. And I would read from verse 1 to 2 again. What goal could these men have had? Why would they have volunteered to join David? You rarely volunteer for a good thing, not to talk of volunteering for a dangerous mission. Why would they have volunteered to join David and what effect did it have in their lives? Let's read the text together. 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 1 and 2. 
David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. David became a captain over four hundred men. And these men were not, according to the text, they didn't tell us that they were the best at fighting or they were the best at the art of war. In fact, the descriptions that was used for them was highly derogatory. In depth, in distress, discontented. These were basically the men that society had let go of. That society had probably told that they could never achieve anything. But these men came to submit themselves to the training of David. These men came, like a friend of mine told me yesterday, they came with insight. They came with foresight. They came when things were not looking good for David. But they saw something. They saw a king before every other person in Israel. They didn't just see a man that was hiding away in a cave. They saw a warrior. They saw a captain. They saw a man that could help them become the version of themselves that they had longed to become. And they came and submitted themselves to the training that they would give them. Now the question is, why would they withstand such a brutal training process? Because like forging, the process of forging is extremely hard on the metal. If the metal could talk, it would probably tell the swordsmith that please, I don't want to become a sword anymore. Please, just leave me as I am. This process is tough. This process is too much. Every day you come, you heat me up to temperatures beyond my beyond what I can handle and just when I feel like I'm falling apart then you start to hit on me with metals and you hit again and you hit again and you hit again and you don't stop that process of forging makes the metal the, the spaces inside the metal the gaps inside the metal to begin to become filled up so as the swordsmith hits the metal again and again it compresses it basically fills up the holes that exist inside the metal therefore forging a stronger blade a, a blade that a samurai a warrior can trust his life into in the times of war in a sense we are all weapons of war in the hands of god and god has to forge us now the question is that as these men have come to adulam and are allowing david to shape them 400 men Many of these men, I believe, are also the men that were quoted in the book of 2 Samuel as David's mighty men. But they were not 400 David mighty men. They were about 30 something out of 400. Yes, the rest must have been good too, but only 30 plus made it to his list of mighty men. It represents the same thing that many people start, but very few achieve the greatness that we all desire. Now the difference between the great and the ordinary sometimes could just be the fact that the great is ready to submit themselves to training, to forging, to extremely high temperatures. To the clanking of metal again and again and again till it shapes them in the way that their trainer here god wants them to be so the big question today is that yes you may have submitted yourself to god because you remember that we don't just study these things to find history fun or to find the stories interesting we study these things to apply them directly to our lives beyond the knowledge that we gain from them we want to see god use it in our lives to change and transform our lives so the question is that 
even though you have submitted yourself to God, are you allowing the process of forging to take place? Yes, it will be painful. I am not assuring you that you will not cry. I am not assuring you that there won't be days when tears will fill up your eyes and it would be like, please, can this just stop? But it will not stop, not until you are the shape God wants you to be. A sword that is weak will kill its master at the battlefield because when its master trusts it, it would fail. God won't trust himself into your hands if you've not been forged by him. Only him can say, yes, I made this one and I forged him into what he is today. I can trust him. So the process will not stop until until you become that image of God he wants you to be. He will keep chipping away. He will keep hitting. He will keep refining. But as time goes on, you will begin to see the beauty that comes out of your life. So in today's episode, David's men must have started their training in the cave of Adulam because clearly they made it a stronghold and you don't make a stronghold without warriors warriors make a stronghold and strongholds make warriors today the question is this am i allowing god to forge me into that shape that he wants me to be or am i purposely letting myself off the hook, off the handvil, off the hammering spot so that I can be this deformed shape that I am. It's a question that you must think about. It's a question that you must pray about. You must say, God, please, no matter how hard and difficult the training process may seem, help me to stay here and withstand the forging process because I know that there is beauty coming out of that. I love God because he is that swordsmith that will never let the sword go without without being in that shape, image, strength that he wants it to be. Everything you go through, just like Adilam was not a place for the weak, it was not a place for children, it was a place where men were made where men were forged that's the same thing with wherever you are right now god is using that place where you are right now to make you it may be difficult it may be easy but just know that god is using that place to forge you a quote says that a man who is not allowed to prove himself is the most unhappy man on earth what does that mean it means that for men that don't go through adversity for men that don't go through times and seasons where their character is tested their patience is tested their lives are tested can we entrust the mysteries of God into his hands can we entrust the wealth of God's kingdom into his hands can we entrust other people's lives into his hands everything will be tested in the forging process and you must stay my dear friend you must stay until you are made in the image of God don't rush out of his presence stay there stay at Adula until your word comes for you to go let's pray dear father we say thank you because this process may not be easy but you didn't tell us that it will be easy lord we say thank you because we know that you are forging us you are making us into a shape into the same image of your child into the same image of your son jesus christ lord our humanity many times will come into play and we will want to weaken things and we want to say oh i don't want this to continue i just want to stop i don't know what to do anymore with my life but lord we pray that the ability to be able to stay 
on that anvil and allow you to hammer us again and again and again and to heat us to temperatures beyond what we think we can handle until we are malleable enough for you to shape us into that same image of you lord we pray that you give unto us in the name of jesus lord it is our desire to be your children to be a battle axe in your hands to be a sword in your hands by which you conquer territories and nations for you but we don't want to ever fail you because of an impurity at the battlefield remove all impurities in this process remove all deformities all errors that may exist within us hammer them away Lord Give us the ability to stay here in your presence, to be made like men. We say thank you, Lord, for your answer to our prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I'm sure you have been blessed by what we shared together in today's episode. Please, I want you to do two things for me. Number one, meditate on this word. Please. My people will say, I beg, meditate on this word so that you can actually be changed and transformed. Number two, please share it with somebody. Thank you. So what are the two things? Meditate on the word of God and please share this word with somebody. God bless you. Stay blessed. Love you.